I have to be burby burby brief. I have to be burby burby brief because I have some company coming um, to film something boring and not game related. Uh, so uh, luckily, there you know wasn't near as dramatic a turn as the last turn. Here we can take a look at our our demographies. First thing we can notice is that the Hobbit, um, with USR local at his his side on a chain. Um, has expanded quite a quite a bit, and his demography is still looking very nice. He's got a lot of cubes off the off onto the map. Um, I think partially because of Flush's um, Flush's advance and the uh, the ex the expenditure of Pegasus. I don't think I talked about that last time. I I was playing with um, talking about things well after I did them. And I, I neglected when I was in the woods to talk about Pegasus. So uh, Pegasus ended up sacrificing herself yet again for the others. This time, I don't know, it didn't seem like there was as much of a reason. Um, but it did, it did, I think get, I think that was what got us the, the Halaf Thaloi and the female figurines. So that was, that was pretty good for, for us in the long run. So I've pretty much already took my turn took our turn for the most part. Um, just anything else that really happened? I, I think it's just kind of recovering from the, the, the chaoses and then, you know, the Hobbit expanding. That's the main story that's going on with everyone else. Um, the possessive man, Jonathan Bolton's getting his demography back together after Flesh's vicious assault. Um, as you can see, Flesh has already moved over here. There was, I actually had to kind of think in terms of the characters without them being there, I was at work uh, just having them do the conversation um, about what they would do. And basically each uh, giraffe, of course, wanted to do her mana giraffe destiny. She's still there. We have the elder. She's all set up. Um, Melky, he saw that there was the this card right here. And I'm kind of spoiling it a little bit in my haste what they actually decided uh, sitting right there. We had the ritual face up so we could take it. Um, after we played this card, which we wanted to play soon, we wouldn't be able to take it. The only, and, and so he wanted to take that and play the card. Giraffe agreed about playing the card, but she wanted to do the Mana Giraffe Destiny instead. Uh, Melky's has a different idea of what he wants our destiny to be. Um, though he's, you know, he placated Giraffe by saying, you know, we'll get the Giraffe as soon as possible. Um, Flush wanted to do something completely different. He wanted to to take Bolton, or not lob, actually. That I don't know if I told you this last time. I did in one of my takes, but I did so many takes that I didn't use that I don't remember. Um, not lob, uh, that should be not lob and not Bolton, but when I wrote the cards, I wrote down Bolton instead because I just was dyslexic when it comes to smooth jazz. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, um, so what he wanted to do is he wanted to do some more, yet more silver backing, which would have kept our innovation track stagnant, kept this card, and just done some more like slashing, slashing deaths. And he was convinced to Melky's point of view for the most part, primarily because Little Red totally agreed with Melky. And also because he can, he can dig, dig moving off and go into the new world, which is where he's headed right now. Um, he likes that idea, and he also wasn't quite sure he wanted to be saddled with slavery. If we, if we continued to press the attack like he was thinking against the possessive man Jonathan Bolton, we might be saddled with slaves, and I don't know if if we want to deal with that right now. Flush kind of likes the ideas, but he could tell that no one was going to go along with him on that. So he acquiesced to going right along here. Bloop bloop bloop. One two three four five. Using our rafts there. Um, and heading that way. We have one more population action. I think we could do some, hmm. I guess we'll move Milky right there. Yeah, that's what we were gonna do. We have got tally sticks as celebration. Uh, Wolf Corbett put this up for auction and we won the auction, which is great because not only do tally sticks uh, give us points here, but they also let us have more cards in our hand, and they let us reset more elders in future eras. I think this this um, eye here is very useful. Um, so that's great. So to celebrate in a sort of a team building exercise, I decided while 
it's not our turn. One thing that I can do is I can start playing this game of battle stations with um, the people who aren't currently participating. Now this might have to change because I'm, I'm thinking of running a campaign for these who are uh, kind of like my kids, right? I'm trying to, to work on fathering them, which um, as you recall from the book, championship fathering uh, requires love, um, modeling, and what's the third one? Coaching. Yeah. So I'm going to run a campaign for them of battle stations, partially because I'm interested in uh, getting into battle stations. One thing, uh, just looking over the rules that I really like, is that you're running inside the ship and outside the ship at the same time. And what happens inside the ship affects outside the ship. What happens outside the ship affects inside the ship. I'm not sure of any other board games that do that. I have a, I've, I, you know, I'm not super into space, but I've acquired a fairly large space collection. This isn't really my space section. It just so happened that I have some a lot of space games right here. Like our town is not a space section. I don't really have a organizational method, really. Um, yeah, like Android. I guess you there's a space elevator in it, but not really a space game. But I don't think any of them has a has that sort of inside outside thing going on. So that'll be fun. Um, it's just also fun to think about what they would choose to be. So we're going through the character creation process right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make everyone's character, even though, you know, like Flush, Little Red, Giraffe, and Milky aren't going to be in this first mission. Um, but I thought I'd make them all at once so that there could be some, like, general balance. Some rules. There are four different professions in the game, at least the base game. I know there are some expansions. Uh, one rule I'm, use, I'm making in terms of design is we are only going to have I'll talk to the cameras easier than talking to the real people um, we're only going to allow uh, two of each profession since there's eight people and four professions we'll have two of each and that'll give some chance that any given group will be balanced and then I guess later on when everyone's involved in the decision making if they go on a, on a thing it might be they uh, all eight of them are running the ship which might be cool um, so that's going to be one thing. No no more than, I think there's five, how many alien races are there? Let me look it up. I think there's five or six. There are six. So two of the races can double up, but the rest I want unique. Just because I want to experience as much aspects of the game as possible. Um, so those are the rules we're going into it. So far, I, I mean just right off the bat, I know Cowboy wants to be a pilot. You might think he would want to be a Marine, but no, he likes to drive. Right now I'm debating what race he's going to be. He's leaning towards human, but he kind of likes the pile of rocks, but then he kind of doesn't want to be a dumb old pile of rocks. Um, and then also Pegasus is going to be an engineer, but I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I get the rest of them figured out. We've worked it out. Partially, um, the the fact that these four were going together right now, that did have an impact on the choices, but I think everyone's fairly happy with who they are, or what what class they are. So here are our two scientists here. Uh, Runt kind of thought about being a Marine, but she went with the scientist instead. Flush, you would think, you know, given how warlike he's been in that game, that he would want to be a Marine, but he wanted to be a scientist right off. Cowboy was obvious uh, for a pilot for me. Um, Cat was pretty obvious for a Marine. This is our Marine pile, Cat and Milky. Milky debated between being a Marine, a pilot, and a scientist, but eventually went with the Marine. He just felt like his athleticism would really be um, be helpful there. Um, a little Red was also kind of someone who was... Little Red and Giraffe were kind of hard for me to choose for. Um, I think his international sales is what eventually made me decide for him to be a pilot. He almost was a Marine, though. Um, and for a while I was torn between Milky and, and Little Red and the um, the pilot and Marine. You know, which one would be a pilot and which one would be a Marine. And I was down to those three, and so that, that made it so that giraffe would go in engineering. Giraffe's really kind of quiet, and it seems like engineering or science would be the best place for a quiet person. Um, but she went with she went with the engineering, but mostly because the science was full. But I think it's it seems like maybe a more quieter uh, activity. Pegasus actually, before I remind myself of what her 
her actual occupation in real life is, I thought she was either going to be a marine or a pilot. At first I thought pilot because, you know, the Pegasus is flying. Uh, but she was she's actually an engineer in real life, so I had her be an engineer in that. And maybe that's not what she would have chosen if she was actually playing. I don't know. Uh, I think people usually choose things that they're comfortable with um, rather than something that's against type. So I, I, I feel pretty happy with this. But I still have this nagging intuition that she should have been a pilot. I don't know. I'm going to ignore it. All right, I worked out their races. So first of all, let's see. Runt and Flush, again, were both very easy for me to decide on. Uh, Runt was uh, Tentac, and one reason I thought she would particularly enjoy this is um, Tentacs, there's this little uh, pile of tentacles there. Um, they, uh, they're big... Th they're they're really into philosophical dichotomies. It says so they like um, words put, pairing words that that are at opposites. So one example they give here is peace gun, um, and there are examples throughout the book, which is nice. Um, just little bits of flavor for the thing, especially in the scenarios, the missions back here. It'll talk about different ships and things. So there, uh, let's look at the names at the the front of the book. That's, that's pretty easy. Okay, so here's some Tentac happy frown. Nigh Hill, Infinity Minus 8, Black Light, Right Wrong, Negated Negation. Uh, that kind of thing, I think that would really appeal to Run. So it was pretty easy to choose for her. Um, Flush, likewise, he chose the, the um, Ziloxian. For one, I think this shape and how it looks would appeal to him. They're also aggressive and warlike beings. So I think he also likes that. Um, there's a and they float, so that might make him feel kind of superior to be this floating star thing. Um, who else? Oh, giraffe was very easy to choose. She's a Kenosian, and a Kenosian. Sorry, I'm right-handed, or I was taught to be right-handed. And a Kenosian right here, very giraffe-like, right? But they're also quiet, um, and they, they suck. They quietly suck the energy out of things. Um, so I think. I think she would appreciate being one of those. And, you know, with the, the selection of the races here, this is a case where uh, it's kind of a mixture between what I think they would choose and what I think fits them best. So in some cases I did one, in some cases I did the other. I don't know that she would actually have chosen this. She probably would have chosen to be human, would be my guess. Um, cat, as in cat, was also pretty easy. She chose the silicoid. Uh, that's this big pile of rocks, basically. Um, Melky was also fairly easy. He's a Zoolan. Uh, they worked for him because they have, not because it's, he wants to be a furry bug with vestigial wings, but because um, he likes their society. It's very, like, orderly, and there's a, there's a high sense of honor, and I think that appealed to him. So those are our two marines, or a rock and a bug. Um, so that left me with Cowboy, Little Red, and Pegasus, that was hard. I went back and forth on that. I had two two potential things that I could double up on, um, and then I had to I had to double up on on two different races, right? And this was going to determine who it was. And I really, you know, they all kind of seemed like they wanted to be human to me. Though Cowboy, eventually, after you know, he was like, "Kaz, a, a pile of rocks. Maybe I could be a pile of rocks." So he went with being a pile of rocks, and I think. I think Little Red went with being a Zoalon at the last minute. I was kind of thinking two of them would be humans, but it didn't end up being that. There's only one human, and that's Pegasus, which makes sense because she's the she's the mother of us. Um, she's the mother of our species. She was the first cube on the board in our game, uh, just north of where Milky now is, right here. Oh no, I've had him in the right spot, right there. That's where Pegasus came into being and spawned the rest of these guys um, in her own way. So she's our token human. Uh, what left I have to do? I guess we got to create our ship. I'm, I'm thinking since it's going to be cowboy ship, it might be a silicoid ship. But I'll have to decide on that. And after we disabused ourselves with the notion that cowboy was some um, Harrison Ford type uh, space smuggler <laughs> and everyone else was just hitching along, we decided it was most appropriate 
for our ship to have a human manifest. So we went with uh, one from the book. I didn't do any monkeying with the modules or anything because I don't know the game well enough to feel confident doing that. This first um, mission especially is going to be primarily um, just to learn. So I'd like to introduce you all to the UREC scout ship Publicland Wren. Um, and it's, it's really, it, this is kind of an exciting moment for me. I feel like uh, uh, these guys are going to go on a, a really exciting adventure, and here's their ship. And it's a really fast scout ship. Here's one thing, though. Um, it only has one life support module. Could always replace. There's not a lot of like. This is required. This is required. One of these is required. This is required, and this is required, right? Uh, and you kind of need some guns because usually there's something attacking you. Is that's what I gather. I feel like it's probably a good idea to have more engines to power things. I don't know. I feel like there's a good reason for that. But anyway, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of flexibility with this size of ship um, for what I can have. But my point is, only one life support. That means, I think it, you can only have four people there. And that's how many I have. So if the others want to come along, we're going to need to be able to upgrade our ship to get something bigger. So I went ahead and made all the characters now, uh, even the ones that aren't aren't uh, going to be played yet just because I wanted them all to be made kind of evenly equally with um, my lack of my equal in terms of my lack of experience with this game so I'll just tell you about the the people the four that are going to be playing and I'll tell you about the other ones um, flush little red giraffe and um, milky whenever they join the crew of um, of the ship all right so cat as in cat she, oh, I made a rule for their naming that their name had to reference their actual name that we use in the Origins game to make it less confusing for everyone involved. So we don't have to have like different layers of naming. I did. I was going to just have them use their regular name, um, but I decided that if you know if if you can kind of tell based on the name, you get some of the flavor of the world and still the clarity. So. Um, Kaz and Cat is Ensign Capazoid. Um, she's a silicoid. Uh, the special. They all got to choose a special ability, and her special ability is connected, which is going to let her get more equipment and money than everyone else. Um, Ensign Pegasus. They're all ensigns. They all start as ensigns, though uh, technically Cowboy is going to be the captain of the ship, because it's a ship of ensigns. Since he's a pilot, he's the, the highest rank. Um, her special ability was tricky, and that lets her do a few, she has like three different special things she can do, which are like space tricks. So like one that I remember is she can like jettison garbage if there's heat seeking missiles or tr tracing missiles, missiles coming, and the missiles might hit the garbage by mistake. So that's her special ability. Um, then we have, and she just used her regular name, Pegasus, because she's a human. Um, Ensign Corpulent Runt. Uh, she's a tentac, so she had to have um, something opposite, somewhat opposite of runt. Um, she's a fast learner, so she's going to get more experience points than everyone else. And then finally we have Ensign Block or Blocky. Um, that's Cowboy. Uh, he doesn't have Cowboy in the name, but I, th I think we can remember that one. Um, all of the silicoids... By the way, they have to have something shape or mineral related. Um, he went with block. He has speed demon, which makes it. Uh, he gets a bonus when he has to, when he wants to go fast or slow, slow down or speed up. All right, so that's where we are. I think we're going to be done for now because um, we've we've gone on a lot. I think next time, I can't guarantee next time my video we're go I'm going to also do battle stations. Um, it just kind of depends on time and whatnot. It's it's getting close to being my turn. I think it's. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Uh, it's gone. This we're at the end of this video. End of gone. Yeah, it's gone. 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 The gone video. The video is gone. Oh. It's gone. 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 Do you want to tell the video that it's gone? Ren in the video. Ren's in the video. Oh. But is it gone? Is the video gone? Ren is gone. The video's gone. Ren is gone. Then say goodbye. Bye.